Welcome to episode 12 of Cartoon Fight Club. As usual, if you are new to this series, please check out one of my earlier videos. But if you know how the game is played, then let's not waste any time and go straight into the specs. Tonight's episode will feature the King of the Monsters and the leader of the Autobots, Godzilla vs. Optimus Prime. Now without further ado, let's meet Cartoon Fight Club's 12th round of fighters. Optimus Prime was the last born of the original 13 Transformers. Before he became Prime, Optimus was known as Orion Pax. Optimus Prime was created as the last of the 13, the first generation of Transformers, each created directly by Primus as a brand of unique warriors set out to protect the universe. As a native Cybertronian, Optimus Prime possesses various natural abilities and capabilities of all inhabitants of the planet Cybertron. It is estimated that he can lift weights that exceed over 200 tons and is highly resistant to damage. Like all Cybertronians, Optimus Prime possesses the ability to reconfigure himself or transform into another alternate mode. He was reconfigured to transform into an Earth-style semi-truck. Optimus Prime has a wide arsenal of weapons such as the Ion Blaster and the Energon Axe. But there is no need to discuss them, because they will have no effect on Godzilla. I will, however, list his far stronger abilities. Optimus Prime is one of the smartest fighters in all of fiction. He has been trained by Alpha Trion for over millions of years. He also has the key to Vector Sigma saved into his brain's database. Vector Sigma allows Optimus Prime to know almost anything about his surroundings and about his enemies. This is going to give Optimus Prime a huge tactical advantage. Optimus Prime has faced many foes of all different sizes. Optimus Prime does not usually have a problem taking on enemies that are much larger than him. As a prime example, Optimus' greatest victory was defeating Unicron. Unicron is the largest transformer of them all. Unicron is the planet-eating transformer that is 25 times larger than Earth. Unicron weighs over 150 sextillion pounds. Earth is only 6 sextillion pounds. Optimus Prime has the firepower and ability to blow him away to bits. How does he do this, you ask? Optimus Prime has the ability to do this through his most powerful weapon, the Matrix of Leadership. The Matrix of Leadership has many different abilities. It is made out of pure energy and it is said to have unlimited power. To completely destroy Earth into bits, it would take around 1,241,166 of the world's strongest nuke, the MK-41, to be launched directly on the Earth's surface. The Earth is mostly made of nickel, which is about as half as strong as diamond. Unicron is made out of transformium, which is ten times harder than diamond. For the Matrix to completely obliterate Unicron to bits, it would have a similar blast to 310,291,500 nukes or 300 supernovas, and that is not even the known maximum firepower of the Matrix of Leadership. The Matrix can also heal wounds instantly and revive the dead. Before Optimus Prime had the Matrix, he easily died from things such as simple stabs in the chest. After the Matrix, Optimus has become as invulnerable as the Matrix wants him to be. The Matrix chooses whether it should heal or revive. Optimus Prime has almost died over 15 times, but every single time he was either instantly healed or revived. The three times he did actually die, however, was when the Matrix wanted to choose a new Prime or when Optimus did not have the Matrix on him. If the world was in imminent danger, the Matrix without a doubt would heal Optimus Prime every time he is hurt. Optimus Prime also has a jetpack and anti-gravity boosters that allow him to fly over 760 miles per hour. Another known weapon of Optimus Prime is the Star Saber. The Star Saber is a blade that emits energy that can cut through any material, no matter how strong that material is. Overall, Optimus Prime is one of the most powerful Autobots in all of Cybertron, but he has died before from simple combat wounds. 
But forget about Optimus Prime, let's transform towards a different topic. Let's go over Godzilla. The name Godzilla is the translation of Gojira, a combination of two Japanese words, Gorira meaning gorilla and Kujira meaning whale. At one planning stage, the concept of Godzilla was described as a cross between a gorilla and a whale. Godzilla has displayed various levels of physical strength. He has been depicted lifting and throwing monsters in excess of his own weight, and Godzilla has the strength to rival Thor, the mighty thunder god. Godzilla's tail has been proven to be a great weapon. From time to time, Godzilla can use his tail for jumping. It is shown to be very flexible and powerful as it is able to lash out quickly and topple over buildings and enemies. Another great attribute of Godzilla is his durability. He has demonstrated the ability to survive complete submission in magma for an extended period of time. Godzilla has even survived direct impacts from asteroids and even a black hole. The only times his flesh has been visibly pierced were in battles between Super X, Destroya, and Mecha Godzilla. Thanks to his advanced regeneration powers, his wounds heal almost instantly. These factors taken together make Godzilla practically invincible. Keep in mind I said practically. In fact, Godzilla has technically died at least four times. Each time he has died has revolved around the fact that he was attacked on the inside. Godzilla's weakest points are inside his body. That is why he never likes to swallow his enemies. Godzilla also has an array of offensive capabilities. He has numerous magnetic powers and can be charged by electricity. Both of these powers will be basically useless against Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is unaffected by magnets as he is made out of transformium. Optimus Prime also runs on energon, not electricity. But forget about those useless capabilities, let's talk about the super effective ones. Godzilla's most famous move is his atomic breath. The atomic breath can instantly melt away many types of metals. It gives off an extremely deadly blast of nuclear energy. Beyond the atomic breath, Godzilla has the red spiral, which is like a supercharged version of the atomic breath. Anything that is touched by the red spiral gets instantly destroyed and decimated to bits. Godzilla's weakest attribute is his intelligence. He may have two brains, and he does have a great sense of knowing things, but when it comes to battle strategies, he tends to have none. He usually fights out of emotion and is very clumsy, but what he lacks in intelligence, he makes up with experience. He has been fighting for over millions of years. Overall, Godzilla has godlike strength, durability, and power, has a weak inner body, and lacks battle intelligence but makes it up with good old experience. These two titans will be duking it out in New York City and there is no prep time. Let the battle begin. Optimus, what is Alpha Trion saying? I wish that I could greet you under better circumstances, Optimus Prime. As you may have long suspected, the Covenant of Primus records events of the future as well as the past. My imperfect understanding of its runes affords me a shadowy glimpse of what is to come. The Covenant's pages foretold that you, Optimus Prime, would journey to the small but significant planet and there engage in a crucial chapter in the war. I know neither the nature of the battle nor its outcome. I only hope that these relics of the ancients will aid the Autobots in your time of need. Optimus, I'm detecting a swell in spark activity. Rest assured, Ratchet, I will proceed with vigilance. We are on our way. Negative. He wants me, Ratchet. This fight must be mine alone. If you don't survive, Optimus, I fear neither will this planet. Very well.
the Chaos Bringer. I humbly request your ear, Lord. I make this appeal not for myself, but for this planet which you constitute, and the beings who inhabit it. Humankind relies upon you for life, sustenance. Your resurrection will only result in the destruction of a species which evolved from the seeds of your very greatness. Indeed. One shall stand, one shall fall. Set a prime till all are one. Optimus Prime used the force of his matrix to finish Godzilla off once and for all. Now before some of you get your pants wet, let me explain how Optimus Prime did this. Not only was Godzilla faced with a blast worth of 300 supernovas, he also faced controlled energy that entered inside his body, which is the weakest point of his body. Now you're still probably thinking, if Godzilla can survive a black hole, why couldn't he survive the Matrix Blast? This is simple to answer. The black hole that Godzilla survived was known as a stellar black hole, which is actually the weakest version of black holes. In comparison, a stellar black hole has about the same amount of force as one supernova. The Matrix Blast has at least the power of 300 supernovas. And not only did this go on outside of Godzilla's body, the blast also went inside Godzilla's body. Optimus Prime has used the Matrix before on Earth, and because the Matrix has controlled energy, it is able to defeat its enemies with unlimited force and at the same time not damaging any of the surrounding innocent bystanders. Also, Optimus Prime did not even use the Star Saber or the Forge of Solus Prime in this battle, which would have also helped him a whole ton. On the flip side, Godzilla didn't use all of his moves either. In fact, it was quite hard for Godzilla to attack something that is so small and fast as Optimus Prime. But like in every battle, it's usually the circumstances that depict the outcome, not so much the fighters. So if you want to see a rematch, you know what to do. Comment down below the word rematch, and if this episode gets 1,000 rematch comments, there will be a rematch in 3D without the Matrix of Leadership. Also, please comment down your suggestions for future Cartoon Fight Club episodes. They may even become a future episode of Cartoon Fight Club. Stay tuned, because the next fighters are going to be revealed. On the next episode of Cartoon Fight Club, the pointy-eared heroes at Sony are going to fight to the finish. Jack and Daxter vs. Ratchet and Clank, coming soon to an Animation Rewind YouTube channel near you.